pleasant good evening to all our viewers. We are glad to see you back on our platform. All right. Last week we were at Birds Island, so this week we're back at the studio. All right. And um, we're here with our program, um, the Hour of Power, and we are uh, we are still doing the hundred days of prayer. And tonight, my I have uh, a guest with me in the studio tonight. I have my name. My name is Elder Shane Neal, by the way, and I have with me Pastor Denny Mokalok, yes, who is joining me tonight for this program tonight. Okay. All right. So before we continue, we would like to, to open with a word of prayer. Can you pray for us, Pastor? Okay. Let us pray. Our dear Father, we thank you that we continue this hour of power. That I could also be here as we share on this very special topic of abiding in Christ with Thanksgiving. We ask, Father, for all our viewers, that they could be encouraged, Lord, as they accepted Christ as their Savior, that they could remain faithful to Him. As we discussed, as Paul warned the, the, the people of Colossae, to not give up on their faith, Lord. We pray for all those Christians, Adventists as well, that are struggling in their experience, that they may find comfort, they may find courage, they may find strength, Lord, as they, they remain in this um, this program and they hear our discussion tonight. As the Holy Spirit impress their hearts, Lord, we ask that they may be drawn closer to you, that they may surrender their all to you. All this we pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 All right. Whatever uh, platform you're viewing us from tonight, um, whether Facebook, YouTube, or Channel 98, we are glad to have you guys viewing us. We are glad to have you guys be our online viewers. And we hope that you learn something from this program tonight. And that this program may be a blessing on unto you. Amen. All right. So tonight we have our our topic. What's our topic, Pastor? It's abiding in Christ with thanksgiving. Abiding in Christ with thanksgiving. And our member verse, our Bible verse says, "As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him, rooted and built up in Him, and established in in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding in it." With thanksgiving. Yes. Colossians 2, verse 6 and 7. As you have therefore received Christ, all of us, I believe, at some point when we decided to, to surrender to Christ, yes. we accept Him. Hence the reason why we receive Him. Yes. And I believe with by us doing that, there is a level of or a measure of I would say power that we receive, Pastor, that we can be able to. To, to overcome certain things in life. Yes. And um, accepting Jesus, you know, as we were recently campaigned, I know, yes. there in Morris Island, I was there in Fresh Pond, with Pastor Jesse. And there's always something that, that captures my attention, you know, whenever it's time for people to make a decision for Jesus. You know, uh, many people, they, they want to give their life to Jesus, but, mm -hmm. you know, at that moment, you, you could see in their faces there's a struggle. <laughs> And, and even for those that don't say they want to give their life to Jesus, you could, you could see in their faces they are contemplating, mm -hmm. they accept the message, but there is just such struggle to accept. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, 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 I think about it, it's like, but it's just water. People go to pool every time to bathe, you know. They go to Bacab, they go to Old Belize or maybe by the riverside. And to bathe is just, it's just water. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think why is it that this water is different, you know, why, why this struggle? You know, but for many people who uh, pass that initial stage of accepting Jesus, and for many people it's a challenge, then comes another challenge. You know, it's, it's living for Jesus. You know, they say it's easy to die for Jesus, but to live for Jesus, that's a whole next challenge <laughs> in itself. You know, and uh, I think what Paul was uh, referring to the inhabitants, the, the church members in Colossae, mm -hmm is that he recognized that they had accepted Jesus. They had passed this first initial phase. But now he recognized that there was a great danger like there exists today, mm -hmm. that there are many people that have accepted Jesus. You know, they, they began in church, they were all on fire, but something happened and there's always some problem that come up. You know, <laughs> Satan, he's, he's an expert in this, that if it's not something, it's something else, you know, that causes at the end of the day that the members would leave the church. And so many people find themselves outside of the church. You know, when Paul was saying that this is a danger, 
yes, accepting Jesus is one thing, but to remain in the church, yes. you know, it's something else. And he was saying it from this perspective. It's not so much that you just become a church member and you remain in the church, but he was seeing the real problem, which was people was leaving Christ. Yeah. And this is where the real issue that exists in the church, you know, it comes from, is that people, you know, they leave uh, Jesus Christ. They, they, they stop having that relationship with Jesus, you know, like uh, at the beginning when somebody gets baptized, you know, they say they, they, they're on fire oh, because energy. They, they have found that love with Jesus, you know, like when uh, the young people, they have the first love. Yes. I know, but I <laughs> share I have my experience, and my wife is watching. I know she had her experience as well. But that, that first love, you know, you're willing to do whatever. Yes. It's, it's the same for the new believers, you know, when they accept Jesus. It's like that first love experience. But because that, that, that relationship with Jesus, you know, um, most people, they don't be intentional about it because maybe they're not aware of it. They're not mm -hmm. conscious of it. And so, you know, it's like a plan that you don't take care of. Yes. Eventually, it dies out, and then you don't accomplish anything. And, and so Paul was saying that to resolve this problem, the, the, the focus should be abiding in Christ. Yes. And, and, and you said a mouthful there, Pastor. Um, you know, a lot of people, they, they come, but they realize too, as well that when going into this, into this 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 water that is just there this is you know it's it's me abiding in christ and when we abide in christ we we there are certain things that we cannot do anymore yes because we know that light and darkness cannot be in the same place at the same time it's either light or darkness and so when they come and accept christ there are certain things that christ just drawing to him eventually you start to strip away certain things, strip away certain things, strip away certain things. And for, for you to get that ultimate feeling of what it what is like to abide in Christ, you cannot remain the same once you decided to accept him, uh, accept him and decide to abide in him because you can't, in other words, for example, I, I cannot hold on to the marijuana and expect to abide in Christ. Yes. I cannot hold on to the drinking or the smoking and try to abide in Christ. I have to, those things will eventually let go. So in other words, it's either abiding in Christ where there is this comfort and this calm. It's like when the Sabbath comes around, you know, when the Sabbath comes around, that the, the, the Sabbath just gives you this, this peace yes. to know that I don't have to go to work, to know that I will just use this, spe this special day that was set aside, this holy day, to just focus on, on, on Christ and, and what he wants for me. And that is what like abiding in Christ does for us. It brings this calm sense um, within us to know that the God that we serve is a God that 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 is faithful, a God that have our back. Yes. You know. So abiding in Christ is, is is so deep that if we literally just focus on it, abiding in Christ, it, it will allow us to be able to to withstand the sometimes the church issue, right? That we may face from time to time because coming to the church is all uh, different people coming together and different people working together and so you will rub each other but when we abide in christ we'll be able to withstand certain things that we may face on a daily basis yes you know yes and uh, to, to abide in christ you know it implies being faithful mm -hmm. and having that faithfulness to him and we come right back again you know how can we have this this faithfulness to christ mm -hmm. as the 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 um, members in Colossae already had, but Paul was seeing in the future that maybe you know something um, that that was existing around in the in the culture, in the, in the religious atmosphere, you know, could cause that these people could come out of the church, mm -hmm. and so he was foreseeing that in order for them to avoid becoming unfaithful, because there is always this danger in Christianity yes. that you know you're faithful one day, the next day you're on going in a different direction and so paul was foreseeing that there was this possibility that this could happen and so he was just reminding the, the people and encouraging he was rejoicing and, and giving that giving them that, that cheer you know sometimes as christians we need somebody to um, cheer us on yes to, to give us that encouraging word that motivating word that yes you're on the right you're on the right track and continue going on that right track you know and i guess that's what paul was doing right here for the inhabitants 
of colors here. Mm -hmm. You know, um, um, Brother Shane, as I was thinking about this, you know how much different our church could be. Yes. If this, uh, this, this culture would be more stronger, like what Paul was initiating with the Colossians uh, right here. I know it does exist, mm -hmm. but sometimes, you know, it, it exists, but maybe on a low-down on, on a, on a low down, <laughs> uh, situation. And so, you know, if this could be more popular, that mm -hmm. church members could be that person that would cheer on other members when they're doing something good. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times in, in the church, it does exist that only when something bad come about then, uh, as, as with everything perfect. else, you know, then you hear that person, oh, he's, mm -hmm. he's, uh, he's at the... Um, everybody conversation yeah. but how when that person is doing something good you know do they get that same recognition yeah do they get that same encouragement from the church you know um, as equally uh, as with the same with the same power as when they do something yes. wrong you know and so i i do think it does make a difference as we see paul he understood it and he was doing it for the the church members in mm -hmm. Colos in Colossae. and we see i love the fact that that you know the apostle paul is someone who who he is like a like a like we say like a role model. He he we know his past that he used to the things that he used to do. Yes, all in the name of Christ. But once he reached a point of the transformation and he changed his name from Saul to Paul, we see that his 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 mindset changed. He's not the same Saul who used to tear people down and and, and look in the look 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 for the bad in people. Yes, he was there encouraging. And like what you said, like what you said, Pastor, is that we need to gear towards pointing people in a in a in a direction of encouraging each other. You yeah. Know, try to motivate each other because the time that we're living in is a is a time where yeah. um for especially for new believers who, who just joined the church, who just recently got baptized, this is what they would need to see and be motivated. You know, we see them doing something good, we want to encourage them. I I I I, I kind of, um, I like the fact that um, I've I've seen a couple times where um, people have been have been encouraging some different individual, but it needs to be something that has to be continuous, yes. like the Apostle Paul, in order for us to see people want to do things, want to be motivated, and that's what Paul did. I like I like why you bring up the the point of Paul's past experience, you know, and I I believe it's what he was doing here for the Colossians was something he experienced firsthand. Mm -hmm. From Jesus, as Jesus said to his disciples, you know, I did not condemn, I, I did not come to condemn the world, but that the world through me might be saved. Yes. You know, I say he did not come to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not the the, the uh, those that are healthy that need the physician, but those that are sick. That is, so you know, and, and Paul understood this 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 idea mm -hmm. that Jesus, you know, he he conducted his ministry by, and and you know, Jesus was the one who helped Paul to get where he was. And so this was the way how he was conducting his ministry, not to condemn people, but to help people. Yes. And so this was what he was doing for the Colossians right here, you know, encouraging them that in spite, in spite maybe they might make their mistakes, because being faithful it does not mean that you will not make any mistakes. You know, That's any marriage would say that. Also, you know, for parents dealing with the children, they will know that um, parents do not they keep the kids out. You know, one year, two years, they're just two years old, they keep them out because they're making mistakes. You know, yes. it's, it's a growing process. And the same thing with members, you know, and Paul understood this. But faithfulness implies that in spite of making mistakes, uh, once they are committed to the cause, you know, you encourage them so that they would go all the way. And I believe that is what Jesus did with Paul. And as you rightly said, when Jesus met Paul, he was in a very bad position. You know, he was going in the opposite direction of where he needed to be. But Jesus understood his commitment, he understood his heart, and so Jesus got him to where he, Paul needed to be. Yes. And so we see Paul, in spite of where he was, literally, mm -hmm. in prison, he was this agent of hope, yes. in Colossians, agent of encouragement for them, so that at the end, they could make it, you know, and that is what we need to be as Christians. Yeah, so, so true. All right, we ask that you continue to send in your, your prayer request to the number 613-9351. Um, we want to go into our first prayer session at this time, and we want to pray for a couple people. Uh, we want to pray for the Can Cancino family, um, who currently they are searching for their missing son. Um, apparently, he was found. He the, the, the young man was found, and they found him dead. All right, and so we want to pray for the family because they are, they are grieving at this time. We want to 
we want to keep the family in prayer. All right? We also want to pray for the young family um, who lost um, a daughter as well. All right? Um, so we want to ask special prayer for them as well. All right? Are we praying for Gordon that is in need of a job? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, so we were praying for these individuals at this time. Um, so we ask that you bow your heads with us as we, as we pray. Let us pray. Father, who art in heaven, as we come before you this evening, dear Lord, we want to thank you so much for the opportunity, dear God, that you have given us to be here on this platform. We ask, dear God, at this time that you continue to allow your spirit, dear Lord, to take control of our lives, dear Lord. Father, we are unworthy, dear God, to to be in your presence, dear Lord, but because of your mercy and your grace, dear Lord, you have opened the way for us to be in your presence. I ask, dear Lord, at this time for the families that were mentioned, dear Lord, the can, can see no family, dear God, who were looking for their loved one, dear God, and, and it so turned up that the young man was, uh, they found him dead, dear God, and so we want to lift up this family at this time, dear Lord. Dear God, we want to ask special prayer for them, dear Lord, at this time, as they go through the time of grief, dear Lord, Father, we don't know what they're going through at this time, dear God. Dear God, when we think of death, we think of death as something that is unexplainable, dear God. But dear Lord, we are so thankful because you have sent your son, dear God, to die on the cross for us, dear Lord. And Jesus, dying on the cross for us, dear God, have overcome death. And so we're thankful, dear Lord, for the opportunity, dear God. We ask special prayer for this family that you continue to send your Holy Spirit, dear Lord, to, to encamp around them, dear God, and to be by their side and to comfort them at this moment, dear Jesus. Dear Lord, we ask our prayer for the young family as well, dear Lord, that you may continue to be with them. Father, I ask and pray that you may continue to, to lift them up, dear God, at this time, dear God. Father, they're going through uh, a grieving time as well, dear Lord, losing a loved one. And so, dear Lord, we, we ask the Father that you may continue to comfort them, Continue to allow your spirit, dear Lord, to be with them, dear God. Father, I ask and pray that you may remind them, dear Lord, that death is only asleep, dear Lord. And if they and their loved one are doing what is right, dear God, that they could be re reunited, dear God, of Christ's second coming. And so we ask, dear God, that you may continue to abide with them at this moment, dear Lord. Father, I ask a special prayer for Mr. Gordon. Um, at, at this moment, dear Lord, you may continue to be with him. Um, he's searching for a job at this time, dear Lord, and I ask and pray, dear God, that you may open doors for him, dear Lord. That the, as he see the doors opening up, dear God, that he could say that it is truly the power of the Lord that has opened these doors, dear God, because there is no way that no man could open these doors, dear God. And so I'm asking this evening, dear God, that you may work things out for him, dear Lord, that he could be able to provide for himself, dear God, and his family at this time as well, dear Lord. Father, I ask and pray that you may be Pastor McCulloch and myself, dear God, that as we do this program for this evening, dear Lord, that you may help us, dear God. Father, I ask and pray that you may allow your spirit, dear God, to be with us, dear Father, that as we speak on behalf of you, dear God, that we may speak words of comfort and words of hope. Thank you once again, dear Lord, for this opportunity for we ask our son, precious name. Amen. Amen. All right, we, we continue with our discussion um, for this evening, and we... We are looking at the, on the topic abide, abiding in Christ with thanksgiving. Pastor, we have, yes. I'm not sure of the campaign that took place in, in where you guys were doing with Pastor Jesse, but I know of the one in, in, um, at Brazil. We had some new souls that came in. Um, and how can these new baptized members, how, what are some ways that they could abide in Christ? You know, um, we we as experienced um, 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 church goers, we 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 have kind of uh, gained a little knowledge of this strategy of what we do. And, you know, but because these are new babes in Christ, what are some things that they can do for them to continue abiding Christ and remain in Christ? Yes, um, the the first thing you know for us to understand what it is to abide in Christ is not an activity. Yes, because some people say, oh, you know, you, you just need to do this or that mm -hmm. and the other, and then. It's like having a checklist and yes. it's, that's it, you know. <laughs> but it doesn't work like that. Really, it's a lifestyle. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a way of living, yes. a way of being. And even in your thinking, you know, it's something that is it, it, a lot when you think about it. But mm -hmm. at the same time, you know, we could find comfort in knowing that 
that God helps us to reach where we need to be. You know, and that's the good part of it. And I believe that's why when you think about when you think about this part, um, as the Bible put it, it's the good news is the yes the evan evan evangelion like what <laughs> the Greek says is the good news. Because really and truly all that God expects from us mm -hmm. is He helps us to do it. And so like our topic says abiding in Christ, you know, Jesus invites us to abide in Him. Mm -hmm. In John chapter fifteen, you know, and he gives us the illustration as a vine with the branches. Yes. And that we won't be able to accomplish anything without him. You know, that's the message. But also, as you think about Philippians, it tells us that we could do all things in Christ mm -hmm. who strengthens us. So uh, for, the, for the members who are recently uh, converted, you know, I just want to leave it like that, a, a general message for now that it's a lifestyle. You know, it's something that you need to grow into it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, it's a daily experience. It's not just one that you... It's like, for example, you know, you say, well, you, you get baptized. And so, well, now that you're baptized, well, is that it? You know, is that it? Is that everything that has to do with your Christianity? No, it's not. You know, it's every day after that what you'll be doing for Jesus. Yes. You know, and, and living with Jesus as well, you know, is a, is a living person that you have to live with. And so um, that, that is what abiding is with, with Christ is all about. is recognizing Jesus in your life. And, and doing everything that you do in your daily activity with him, mm -hmm. you know, and that's that's what it's all about. And I, I love the fact that you said, Pastor, um, as just before we take our, our first break, um, I love the fact that you said um, it's a lifestyle. Yes. That means everything I do will send to around trying to abide in Christ. Yeah. Um, you know, and in this lifestyle, for example, a person who tries to be a vegetarian or a vegan, they have to change certain things. They have to change, change um, you know, I'm not going to put this in my diet. I'm not going to put this in, you know, in my food because it might draw me back yeah. to where I was, yes. you know. And so it's the same thing with, 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 with this, with abiding in Christ. There are certain things that we will have to allow Christ to, to, to remove from us because it might draw us back to where we was, once was. And, which and is, the process is, a, is the process a growing experience. It's a learning experience you now as you begin. And I think this will be very encouraging for um, our newly converted members is that as you begin, you don't know everything. Yes. But as you go along, you know, God has a very interesting way of how he points out things to you. Mm -hmm. But I see <laughs> that you need to be receptive. You know, it's, that's the work of the Holy Spirit. Yes, that is so, so true. Yes. All right. Well, we, we, we want you to continue to send in your prayer request to the number 613-9351 so that we can pray for you and pray with you. At this time, we'll take our first break. So don't go anywhere. Just sit back and, and relax. You might be asking, who are Seventh-day Adventists? Commonly known as Adventists, we are a Christian movement established in 1863. We have 28 fundamental beliefs and more than 20 million members. We also observe the seventh day Sabbath. Worldwide, we have more than 162,000 congregations. We serve countless communities with our education institutions, with two million students. And 198 hospitals around the world and it's all because we love Jesus. Why do we get sick? How can we prevent diseases? What does it really mean to be in good health? My name is Tracy Lewis, and I'm the host of Defining Your Health, an ATN-sponsored program to introduce health and wellness education to our families, churches, and international virtual community. Health should be a central part of our daily lives and the choice for optimal health should be in our hands. So if you have questions related to sustainable lifestyle practices, food and nutrition, physical fitness, social wellness, or perhaps a public health issue, then join us every Tuesday at 10 a.m. for engaging discussions led by diverse health experts and medical professionals. God wants you to be healthy. ATN wants you to be healthy. 
So continue to pray that God leads and bless this ministry. Become a faithful viewer and invite your friends and family to like and share our programs. And remember, you can always make an in-kind donation or financial contribution to further the work of this ministry. Thank you for being a part of the ATN family. And we pray, beloved, that you may prosper in all things and be in good health just as your soul prospers. Everything went dark. We had like no electricity, nothing. All of my classes are online, and that's why it's really difficult to keep up with everything. But you know, I think God calls me in the midst of all of this chaos and noise and I don't know everything. But he doesn't he doesn't compete for just my attention. He competes for my heart. That's why I need to spend time with him in the quiet. And it's so interesting to me that even though I'm with him in just those quiet moments, experiencing him is not quiet. It's so much more, much greater and fulfilling. And that's the fascinating thing. His power is not just bound to those quiet moments, but they give me the trust and strength that I need every day. Hi, my name is Alessandra Alamia. I am in the class Standard 5 Choral at New Horizon SDA. Today I am going to be telling you what I like about my school. I like that there is supportive teachers in this school that always encourage their students. Like right now, I have a teacher named Mr. Javier Rodriguez. He's always supporting his students and telling them to do their best, as well as Ms. Talika. Hi. My name is Elizabeth Sansores, and I am the Vice Principal of New Horizon SDA School. New Horizon SDA School was established in 1999 with the purpose of serving the community of San Pedro spiritually and academically. We started out with a population of 50 students and 5 teachers. Currently, we have a population of over 500 students 18 teachers, two administrators, and a secretary. Our goal is to increase our classrooms so that we can serve an even bigger population. We look forward for your support. Hi, my name is Samuel Che, and I'm the principal of New Horizon Seventh-day Adventist School. New Horizon joins the sisterhood of Adventist schools around the world in preparing students for this life and the life to come. New Horizon takes pride in the working on behalf of the social life of our students. We also do all our best to work and improve their physical life. And one of the important things we put a lot of effort is the academics. And for that, we do programs that will uplift them, that will make them stronger spiritually, and that will eventually take them to accept Jesus as their personal savior. Thanks for supporting Adventist Education. Good evening, and we're we're back with our program, the Hour of Power, and we're also we are, we are doing the, the hundred days of prayer. And our, if you had missed us the first part, our topic for this evening is abiding in Christ with thanksgiving. And our member verse it says that as you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him, rooted 
and built up in him and established in, in the faith as you have been taught abounding in it with thanksgiving. Colossians 2 verse 6 and verse 7. Yes. I'm your host, Ella Shane Neal, and, and my co-host for this evening is Pastor Denny McCulloch. We have been having a, a very interesting uh, a discussion this evening and we hope that you are you are you enjoy it and that you be a part as well. So, Pastor, we have been looking at um, abiding in Christ, not only abiding, but it says abiding in Christ with thanksgiving. Yes. You know, giving God thanks because, as what we have mentioned, we said that giving God, doing something, abiding in Christ, doing something, it is one thing for us to do something, but it's one thing for us to do it with thanksgiving, with a thankful heart. You know, and I believe that's that's the the the, the line that is drawn, doing it knowing that I am grateful, that I am thankful for what I'm doing, right? And so um, to our viewers, abiding in Christ with thanksgiving. It's not easy, but we can do it with the help of God. Yes. And so uh, the first part, we're talking about abiding in Christ as well. You know, that was the main focus for the first part of this, this, uh, this program for tonight. Mm -hmm. um, but as we find here, it says that, that as you receive Christ, mm -hmm. It's one thing to receive Christ as we outlined in the beginning. Yes. But then the other thing is this so walk in him, mm -hmm. a rooted and built up and established in your faith. You know, mm -hmm. um, Paul was urging the believers to keep on continuously conducting themselves as mm -hmm. the, and their fears within its fears marked out by Christ Jesus himself, mm -hmm. doing only what he would do and engaging themselves exclusively in the things that would please him. Mm -hmm. And while they do it, like you say, they were to do all of this with <laughs> thanksgiving. You know, and easier said than done, you know, we could say, oh, well, in good times we could do it. We could be yes. grateful to God. But how can we be grateful to God when tough times hit? And this is where the challenge comes. Mm -hmm. But uh, for Paul, it was not something foreign to himself that mm -hmm. he was telling the Colossians to do. You know, as this popular saying, do as I say and not as I do. Yes. It wasn't this case for Paul. What Paul was telling the, the members here in the church of Colossae to do was exactly what he mm -hmm had learned by experience, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul was writing to the Colossians uh, from a prison, uh, being in prison. You know, he was condemned unjustly for something that he never did. <laughs> you know, because the Jews saw him as a threat and they wanted to get rid of him. But God was uh, providentially working so that Paul would be a witness to, to Rome. Mm -hmm. And for everybody, even up to the day, and today we have the privilege and I share that we could be discussing <laughs> on exactly this topic. And so, exactly. You know, we could we, we could understand how we could be thankful, like Paul was thankful even though he was in, in his prison cell. Mm -hmm. And today, as as viewers, you know, you might be going through your own struggle. Mm -hmm. And so, as Paul is reminding us, we accept Christ, we walk in Christ, mm -hmm. that we could always be grateful that we don't know how far our experience with Christ, you know, would go to encourage someone else as we are encouraged by past experience mm -hmm. so so true all right well um, we will come back to that, that i have a uh, something to say i want to let to us but we want to go into a second um session of prayer um so we ask that the to send your number to 613-9351 and we want to lift up those individual that we have on our prayer list for tonight all right we want to pray for our sister um who has i believe a blood clot in her lungs which is um, caused by covid and so we want to lift up that sister this evening um who has a blood clot in her lungs we want to pray for her pastor yes we also want to pray for um uh, uncle with finance all right pray for uncle with finance to remove the cataract all right um, to remove the cataract from his eyes all right and he needs some finance to help to facilitate this for this to happen all right now so we're right. praying for the youth of belize so uh, we know the youths are the future, and some people say the youths are the, the now. Mm -hmm. We also want to pray for them because they have a very powerful impact on our community. We pray for Glenn Ford, who is still missing, mm -hmm. and Sister Flores from, from Hattieville Church. We want to keep them in our prayers. And we invite you all viewers to join us as we'll be praying right now for all of these individuals. Let us pray. Our dear Father, once again, we pause, Lord, as we lift up all these names, as was mentioned. We pray for the, the individual with the blood clot, Father, in the lungs, as they go through this time, Father, that they, they find comfort and they, their faith may, exp uh, may increase, Lord, as they place all their trust in you, Father. We pray that you open the way 
that they could get the necessary treatment, and also, Lord, that they could find the assurance of your salvation. Yes. I pray for the uncle as well that needs finance to get the treatment for his cataracts as well. Lord, we ask that through your great mercy, your compassion on us, that you may open a way that he could yes. receive the help that he needs. Also for our sister in Hatterville, Father, we also ask that we help him, help her that she may uh, get through whatever uh, challenge and uh, situation she is going through at this moment. We pray for young people in Belize, Father, that uh, is a time that the young people, they need you most. Father, we ask that you could intervene in all the issues that are affecting them today, Father. We ask that you may open the way that they may see you as the hope that they need in their lives. We also pray for Mr. Glenn Ford that is still missing. Father, we pray for the family members, Lord, that they could continue to keep their faith and strong in you, Father, that you would open a way that in due time they could find the loved one. And also we pray that you keep our um, brother Glenn Ford safe and, and help him, Father, that wherever he is, that he may turn to you for guidance and help in whatever situation he's going through. So, also we pray for our brother Alfredo Tun in Freetown Sebun, Father, we ask that you may help him as you know that he's going through a lot of pain uh, recently, Father, we ask that you could intervene in his situation, Father, you could help him up through this situation, Lord, that he could have uh, comfort, he could have peace of mind, and he could uh, grow in his uh, spiritual experience with you, that he could trust you more. And also we pray for the young family in Boom. and also the other young man that, that passed away, Father, uh, Mr. Eck, and the family. Lord, as both of them lost the loved ones, we ask that you comfort them during this time of grieving. Lord, all these things we ask in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 All right, I want to thank you once again for joining us. We ask that you continue to send your prayer requests to the number 9-613-9351 um, so we can pray for you and pray with you. All right, Pastor, you mentioned something there. Um, the Apostle Paul wrote and while he was in his prison, I, no, I, am, I, I am thinking most of us, when we are in a situation where um, our life depends on it, where we are not guilty, but yet it seems as though we still find ourselves in a, in a situation. I am thinking that one of the least things that we would ever have ever thought of doing is to to try and encourage somebody else when we ourselves need encouragement. Yes. But what I think of the Apostle Paul is the fact that he had learned the art of abiding in Christ, what it means to abide in Christ. And also being thankful. And being thankful. Yeah. That even though he was in a worse situation than those who he wrote to, he was more encouraged than them. Yes. And so hence the reason why he was able to, 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 to write to them and let them know and encourage them. And, and to our viewers, there are times where you might find yourself in a situation where it seems as though it's unjust, that I don't deserve this. Maybe you have lost a loved one. And you might be saying to, my, to yourself, this is something, I, I, I'm not sure if God is, is, is watching, but I'm, I don't deserve to be in this situation. I want for you to know that even though you're in that situation, that God is still with you. Yes. And God was with Paul while Paul was in prison. We saw, we, we saw that he, he allowed an earthquake to, to come and shake up that prison. Right? And so, even though you might find yourself in a situation where it seems as though you, you, you were dealt with unfairly, don't feel the spirit that, that, that you're in this alone because God is with you, with, with you and with us in that situation. Yes. And, and so, um, as I think about that, I, I believe that Paul had contemplated what he knew about Jesus, mm -hmm. you know, and he, he, he was able to grasp the, the message that he, was, he would apply to his own yes. experience. You, you know, it says here that Christ is the living rock and our own, uh, our sure foundation. Mm -hmm. And we should be rooted and established in Christ, who is our all and in all. You know, and I, I believe that for Paul, this was something that was real. Yes. So all that he knew that Jesus went through, you know, he was treated unfairly. He was condemned unjustly. He suffered a very humiliating death. And despite all of this, you know, Jesus, you know, he was committed to the mission that he came to, to do. And at the end of the day, it was to help other people mm -hmm. to have a standing chance. 
And even though Paul was going through, not in the same magnitude, but it was something very serious that he was going through being in the prison in Rome, and more than likely, you know, he would have been killed. And we know that the story says that the first time he was in prison, he was let go for a while, and then he was in prison again the second time where, you know, he was killed. But uh, during this, this time, he, I, I believe that he could have uh, shared the experience like Jesus said. I believe that he was close. He was closer to God through this experience, but more importantly, that God was closer to him, mm -hmm. as what the psalm says that God is nigh to the broken hearted, yes. and He saves those that have a contrite spirit. Mm -hmm. And I believe that maybe Paul, just like many of us, you know, when they're going through a difficult times, the thought is there that mm -hmm. man, why is this happening to me? But we we give God thanks for His Holy Spirit friendship. Yes. And, you know, the assurance of Jesus that in difficult moments is there for us. Mm -hmm. and, and even though we can't see how we will get out of it, you know, all we need to do is take one day at a time. Yes. And know that God will not put us through something that we cannot endure. Mm -hmm. It's because God see that we could get through it that he put us in it. You know, and, and whatever we are going through, you know, is what James tells us. You know, we count it our joy when you go yes. into the uh, trials, knowing that these very same trials is, is working, uh, uh, doing a special work in us that we could become better individuals, mm -hmm. that our characters could become uh, stronger. And at the end of the day, the Jesus you know, that we profess to serve, you know, could be uh, demonstrated mm -hmm. in our very own lives. Uh, this was the experience that Paul was receiving for his friend from God being in all of this. And this was the experience that he wanted the inhabitants, the, the members in policy to have. And even us today, as we are studying about this topic, that uh, our experience today, as difficult as it is, is an opportunity for us to become better Christians. Mm -hmm. And so, while we are abiding in Christ, that we become uh, grateful, we are always grateful that in the end, God is doing it for us. Mm -hmm. that we could become better Christians. Yes, that's so true, so Pastor. And I, 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 as you were talking there, I, I somehow my mind contemplated on, on Stephen. Yes. And could you imagine you preaching for, for God and yet you are being crucified, yet you are being dragged out to be stoned to death. And while you are being stoned to death, you, you look up and you, you instead of, Allowing God to rain down fire and say, Lord, rain fire down on these people who are stoning me. You look up and you still, you were, you know, while being stoned and, 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 and dying at the same time, you still look up and you say, Lord, be with the individual. Like what Stephen did. Stephen could have allowed, asked God to, to, to rain fire down on these individuals who were stoning him because he was doing the work of the Lord. Yes. But because Stephen was so much abiding, because he was in Christ and he, he abided in Christ. He was at the point of, instead of cursing them, still ask the Lord to, to, to forgive them, you know? And that's what abiding in Christ does to us, that sometimes we, it is, as human beings, we are tough. As human beings, we, we, we fail. As human beings, we mess up. As human beings, we say things that might not be pleasing. And that's a human part of us. But as we abide in Christ, we realize that we made mistakes. We will make mistakes. But we're not supposed to stay at the point of, yes, I made a mistake and I'm going to stay there because Christ is not going to accept me back. But when we abide in Christ, we realize that even though I mess up, I can still come to him and, 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 and I can pray to him and, and yes. he will accept me. And that's what abiding in Christ does to us. It gives us this cushion to know that, that God is always there for us, just waiting for us to come and for us to come to him and for us to pray and, and for us to allow him to to, to, to come into us and, and, and transform us from the inside out. Yes. And I like, I like this phrase in regards to what they're saying, Brother Shane. It says, so walk in Him, mm -hmm. rooted and built up in Him, and establish your faith. Yes. But I like the idea of walking because mm -hmm. this depicts to me that what Paul is telling the Christians that they must experience is really a journey. Mm -hmm. You know, and a journey is not that the first step you do, you don't reach a journey. You know, it's, it's many steps. Mm -hmm. You know, as the Chinese proverb say, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. And some people, they are, they are free to take that one step of, for those who began the journey. Mm -hmm. You know, and sometimes the journey could become challenging. Yes. And there's always that option 
at the back of our minds at all times, mm -hmm. you know, just give up. Mm -hmm. And it's easier to give up than to continue. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, there, there are several examples of people who began races, you know, they began marathons. And at the breaking point when they thought they could have given up, and they would turn back, you know, they would have been closer to the finish line. Mm -hmm. That is what uh, Christianity is all about. It's always closer to the finish line if we are in the journey with Jesus Christ. We are mm -hmm. closer. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, walking with Jesus, it means that it is a, it's a growing process. It's something that is continuous. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and also we learn as we go. We go and we learn. We learn and we go. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, for Paul, as he encouraged these, these members, you know, he was uh, reminding us as well that whatever we have accomplished mm -hmm. in the past, you know, it's, it's good. But as long as we have life, there's still more that we could accomplish. Yes. You know, and I believe that that is where God is working on us now. Mm -hmm. That we could, we could continue to prepare ourselves so whatever we face in the future, you know, we could face it with Him. Yes. But that, that requires a lot of uh, dedication to God, a commitment to God, and that is what we need to work on every day. That we could become more committed to God, yes. become more dedicated to God, and as we understand in all of this, is who help us to accomplish all of this is the Holy Spirit in our that lives. So, and so we see the great need of the Holy Spirit in our experience as well. Yes, that is so so true. All right, we go into another prayer session at this time. Um, we want to pray for the ATN family um, that the Lord continue to use them and, and this ministry to do His will. All right. All right, we pray for Granny Kate, who is sick. Also, we're praying for all of those who are jobless today, and also our leaders in government. All right, so Pastor, can we do two prayer? Yes. For these. All right, so we're two, doing two prayer. I'll pray, and then you can go ahead and pray. All right, let us pray. The God, we come before you once more this evening, the Lord, lifting up the names that were mentioned. We want to lift up the ATN family, the Lord, that you may continue to use them and, and this ministry. That as they continue to broadcast, the God, that your words may go forward, the Lord, and that your words may, may be like a hand and that, that, that just shape and craft, the Lord, those who need to hear your word, the God. Father, I ask a special prayer that you may continue to be with this television network, the God. Father, it is needed for this time, the God. Father, you have said that the word would go out for us to preach the Lord in, 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 in good times and in bad times the Lord Father I ask and pray that as this TV ministry the Lord continue to proclaim your gospel continue to proclaim your words the Lord I ask and pray the God that it may touch hearts the God Father we want to ask uh, continue to ask special prayer as well for uh, Granny Kate the Lord who is sick at this time the Father that you may continue to be with her Father, wherever she may be at this time, the Lord, I ask and pray, the God, that you may allow your spirit, the God, to comfort her at this moment, the Lord. Allow your spirit, the Lord, to uh, remind her of how good of a God you are to her, the Lord. Be with those who are looking after her as well, the Lord, that you may continue to bless them as well, the God. I ask special prayer for those who are jobless, who are seek, uh, searching for job at this time, the Lord, that you may provide for them, the Lord. Father, we know we are still in a pandemic there God but we are seeing the light at the end of the tunnel there Lord and so we ask special prayer for those who are seeking job to provide for their family there Lord that you may provide for them at this moment there God Father we want to ask special prayer as well for our government as well there Lord that you may be with them as they make decisions there Lord that these decisions may not be selfish decisions there God but it may be the decision that would benefit the people in Belize there Lord I ask the God that you may continue to help us, the Lord. Continue to help them, their Father. That they may seek you in everything that they do. Thank you once again for being the God who always answers our prayers, the Lord. In the sons of my prayer. Amen. Amen. Dear Father, we lift up those who are jobless tonight, Father. We know it's a challenge for any um, person who is the breadwinner in the home to be without jobs. And we ask that in a special way, Father, you continue to provide for them, Lord, as you promised that you would take care of us as we trust in you, Father. Uh, as you take care of the birds that don't, they don't gather in barns, yet they have their food for every day. Father, we ask that you could intervene in a special way on behalf 
of all those who are without jobs tonight. But most importantly, Father, help them that they could place that they could place their trust in you, and that they could understand, Lord, that you have a greater plan for their life. And it's not only to make it in this life, but also to make it into eternity. And so we ask that you, Holy Spirit, that you may draw them to understand this great truth. Pray for our leaders in government, Father. As we know, the times that we're living in is, is a challenging, um, it's a challenging times where there are so many uh, problems that exist within leadership. Lord, and there are many things that threaten the leadership as well. Yes, Lord. And we ask that for our leaders in government, that you would help them, Lord, that they could have wisdom from heaven, that they could have a, your understanding, and most importantly, that your Holy Spirit would prevail in their lives. Father, that in every decision-making process, Father, in every action, Lord, that everything that they do, Father, could be for the right. Lord, that it could uh, be that in the end, that justice would, be, right. would prevail in everything, and that there could be equity and fairness that would exist in society. We pray for the big uh, referendum that is coming up in our country as well, that in the end, your will will be accomplished, Father, and that your name will be glorified in all of this, that our country could continue to be this country that has you first as a God in your life, and that as a country, Lord, we could serve you, I live for you every day. We pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 All right. We, we want to continue the discussion as we, we wrap up. We want to, um, I just want to read a short part. It says, it says, the world's redeemer was treated as we deserve to be treated in order that we might be treated as he deserved to be treated. Yes. As human beings, we, we, we deserve to be in the place of Jesus in terms of the treatment that he received. That was due to us. Yes. But he decided to, to, to swap place yes. with us. Yes. And could you imagine if I was to receive a million dollars and I have the winning number in my hand and I swap that number with somebody else. That's what Jesus did. He, 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 he came down from heaven and he, he swapped the place with us because of the love that he had for us. Yes. And while he was dying on the cross, he knew that, he, in fact, he, he, was, he, he, he abided in the Father and that was what allowed him to be able to stay connected. Yes. Right? And, and we see that Jesus accomplished the mission, mm -hmm. you know, which was at the end of the day to give us what he deserved. Yes. He would take what we deserve upon him himself. And, and what did we deserve is condemnation. Yes. <laughs> and what did he deserve? You know, that was everything that he had mm -hmm. was life and everything. And that was taken away from him so that we could have a standing chance. Yes. You know, Paul, the same thing happened with him. Mm -hmm. And for every person that accepts the call to be a Christian, you know, it's accepting the same mission that we must give up what we think we are entitled to. Mm -hmm. But we deserve what, you know, is our claim in life. We mm -hmm. must give that up in order to give other people hope, you know, and, yes. and that's the calling that we have as pastors, as leaders in the church, that yes. man, maybe not all the time things will work out in our favor, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, we look at it for the greater good. Yes. You know, that, that people could be saved and that we could set an example for others that mm -hmm. they could see that despite maybe the world may not understand what is happening, what mm -hmm. we're doing, that in the end it could be the blueprint that they could follow, they say, man, well, this is the way. If yeah. Jesus had to give his life on the cross. People don't understand it. That's the way. If, if Paul had to end up in prison, and that's the way and we must do it with gratitude. Yes, yes. That is so, so true. All right. At this time, we want to thank you guys so much. We want to, I want to thank you, Pastor Denny, for, yes. for being here. Uh, thanks, we want to thank, thanks for the invitation as well. Yes. We want to thank our viewers for viewing us on your different various platforms, Facebook, YouTube, and Channel 98. We thank you so much for the opportunity that we were in, in, your, in your space. And so we ask that you join us next week, same time, same place. Take care.